Good evening, children, and welcome to Yup Master. We have started with the unit of cell, all right, and today we're going to be doing a bit of question discussion of about all about the prokaryotic cell. So before we begin the question discussion, let's just go through once again the theory that we have done about the prokaryotic cell and its related MCQs too, all right. This is going to help you boost up your, uh, it'll help you revise the topic for your NTSC for the questions involved, okay, so that the paper solving becomes much easier. All right. So before uh, we begin into the prokaryotic cell, let's just go through once again the important topics about the history of cell. All right. Now in the history of cell, we learned that um, there was a theory which was called as a cell theory and that was proposed to us by Schleden and Schwann. Now cell theory are a group of points which each and every cell in order to be called as a cell, it has to follow those points, all right? So that's why it's called as a cell theory. So let us just go through again, which are the points involved in cell theory, okay? So it begins as, first of all, the basic criteria that all living organisms, they are always going to be made up of a cell. Whether you're talking about if it's living, whether it is a bacteria, whether it's a plant or whether it's an animal, if at all you want to call it as a living organism, then it has to be made up of a cell, all right? We also saw that the cells are the basic structural and functional units of life. And we also see that uh, cells contain certain genetic information, all right, which is that genetic information when it is in one cell, when that cell divides and forms daughter cells, then that information is going to be passed on from the parent cell and goes to the daughter cells as well, all right? We also saw points where we had seen that cells basically whatever are whatever are inside the cell means can I call this as a cell organelle? Well, whatever cell organelles are there, they are all similar in their chemical composition and also similar in their metabolic activities. Okay, what are the metabolic activities means if I'm talking about a chloroplast, then a chloroplast everywhere is going to perform photosynthesis. If I'm talking about mitochondria, Mitochondria in all the cells, whether it is a plant cell, whether it is an animal cell, it will always be doing the work of cellular respiration. So we say that cells are similar in their chemical composition and in their metabolic activities. Okay. Ahead we see that all the cells are always going to be arising from cells which have already been existing. Okay. You can never have a cell just come out of nowhere. Always there is a cell and from that cell only, when that cell is going to divide or rather even when that cell is going to fuse with another cell like we see in fertilization, only then we can get a new cell. So, all cells arise from pre-existing cells and this, is, this whole uh, fundamental was given to us by a scientist named as Rudolf Virchow. Now, this whole thing of the concept of all cells arising from pre-existing cells was given a name and it was called as omnis okay omnis cellular e cellular okay so this was the basic concept and this is uh, this whole thing proposed by Birchow don't forget the name of the scientist extremely important for your MCQs and your NTSC exam so it was Virchow who gave this up and it was called as Omnis Cellular E Cellular. Okay. We also see that cells are all uh, self-contained units. Okay. Generally, when we talk about cell divisions, then always one cell divides by a cell division, which is called as mitosis. Okay. But by mitosis, what happens is the two daughter cells which are formed are going to be exactly identical to the parent. Right. But then there are certain cells which are very special cells and those special cells are said to be totipotent. What are they called as? They're called as totipotent cells. They are called as totipotent because they are able to give rise to a whole new type of cell. So when one cell is having the ability to give rise to a whole different new type of cell, then this is what we're going to be calling it as totipotent, okay, a totipotent cell. And in humans, the example of a totipotent cell I gave you was that of a stem cell. Where are those stem cells found? Those stems are found are in the cord which is connecting the mother with the fetus. And that is none other than the umbilical cord which is being cut at the time of delivery. So it is the umbilical cord which contains the stem cells. 
after life after the whole uh, birth process is done and the baby is out then stem cells cannot be found only at the time of delivery okay we also saw some certain uh, terminologies okay you know two of them you know what this part is going to be called as we call it as nucleoplasm and the remaining part of the whole cell was called as the cytoplasm right but we learned a new name when you are going to collectively talk about cytoplasm as well as of nucleoplasm then collectively together it is going to be called as the protoplasm of the cell so protoplasm means cytoplasm plus the nucleoplasm too now when we talk about or when we come forward towards the prokaryotic cell okay now when we speak about a prokaryotic cell remember we are talking only and only about the bacterial cell all right so it is all about the bacteria and uh, this is going to be basically unicellular and uh, why is this called as a prokaryotic cell first of all we remember that because karyon means nucleus okay and the word pro was standing for primitive okay so basically this prokaryotic cell is the one which has got a primitive nucleus a nucleus which is not well defined in fact you cannot even call it as a nucleus you may say that it is something like a nucleus if not exactly a nucleus okay so these are all uh, examples here of bacteria now when we talk about these prokaryotic cells and we when we talk about bacteria then we see that out of all the bacteria present there are only they all of them are going to be present in one of these four forms remember the four forms that we have done of bacteria started with the round shaped one which was called as cocci then came the ro rod shaped ones which were called as bacilli all right after that came the comma shaped ones which we called as vibrio and the fourth one was the spiral ones which were called as the spirilla or spirillium all right so this is basically how all bacteria can be found okay the shape of them all right we moved ahead and we studied the general structure of the prokaryotic where we first started from outside and then moved our way inwards outermost part of the prokaryotic cell is called as the cell envelope and if you remember the cell envelope was made up of three layers okay those three layers the outermost layer was called as the glycocalyx it is the glycocalyx which is the reason why the cell is able to even adhere itself to other places it's going to give the well defined shape for the cell also this after the glycocalyx the second layer inner walls is called as the cell wall and the innermost layer is going to be called as the plasma membrane so we have the glycocalyx we have the cell wall and innermost we have the plasma membrane okay so these were the three layers of the cell envelope now after the cell envelope coming a bit inwards okay moving a bit inwards is the whole cell matrix which we're going to be calling as the cytoplasm of the cell all right cytoplasm is the re region where all the constituents of the cell are going to be embedded in okay now in a prokaryotic cell the cytoplasm is a semi fluid like substance and remember one thing the cytoplasm here is not going to be moving anyhow when we talk about eukaryotic cells i had explained to you that there is streaming movements happening there but in a prokaryotic cell remember that streaming movements is not occurring and streaming movements was given a name it was called as cyclosis so in a prokaryotic cell there is no streaming movements and there is no cyclosis happening at all all right now we see here that uh, the prokaryotic cells basically they have no membrane bound cell organelles so even though this is a cell if you are going to be expecting mitochondria and all here well it's not present at all so there are no membrane bound cell organelles over here but it does contain substances like chromatophores contains inclusions also it contains like a uh, glycogen starch phosphate sulfate these are all the food materials that it is taking and it is going to gather up over there all right now uh, we see here that the chromatophores which are there okay these substances that we're seeing here chromatophores these are found in the membranes of the bacteria which are basically phototropic okay 
means the bacteria which are going to be using light as the source of energy to produce food all right it is going to be using it for performing photosynthesis okay what do they contain look at these pigments that they are containing they contain bacterial chlorophyll bacterial phaeophytin and they contain carotene through pigments all right okay ahead we also studied further details inside this prokaryotic cell where we saw that there are structures which are present which is found only and only in the prokaryotic cell which exactly is that structure that structure was called as a mesosome do you remember this mesosome where is it found look at the mesosome here this is just what i have just colored over here red color do you see that children that structure that you're seeing there is a mesosome all right what is this mesosome basically going to do this has this this has the ability to give rise to the cell wall do you remember the cell wall it was a part of the cell envelope do you remember the cell envelope had three parts first was the glycocalyx second was the cell wall and third was the plasma membrane okay so this was the mesosome okay this this invagination that you're seeing here inside the cytoplasm that is what the mesosome is also there was a cell organelle here which we call as the ribosome so remember one thing that if there is a cell organelle which is common to a prokaryotic as well as a eukaryotic cell it would be the ribosome are mesosomes found in eukaryotes not at all are ribosomes found in eukaryotes yes they are so ribosomes are the ones which are present in both prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes all right all right good evening good to have you here and let's have some interactions done all right now when we start when we learned about ribosomes okay if you go back to the video when i'm where i'm explaining to you about ribosomes in prokaryotic cell you remember that ribosomes have two subunits okay there is one large subunit and then there is a smaller subunit and the basic function of the ribosomes is to produce proteins means protein protein generation or you may call this as protein synthesis is the major function of a ribosome whether it is in a prokaryotic cell or whether it is in a eukaryotic cell it's going to be producing proteins look at this here this structure that you're seeing is the whole ribosome put together these are the individual subunits that this ribosome is made up of okay now when we talk about these subunits here what do we do and how do we measure it let us say we take the whole ribosome at a at or rather collectively taking taking it collectively you can see that that ribosome is going to be when you centrifuge it it would be settling at a certain rate and that rate is going to be given a unit of a capital s okay so basically you have here that if it is a prokaryotic cell the whole ribosome is going to be settling at a unit of 70s how much it is a prokaryotic cell so it is 70s okay what does s stands for over here s stands for swedberg swedberg's unit okay so s is standing for swedberg's unit and if at all we consider the individual units the small subunit and the large subunit then the small subunit settles down at 30s and large subunit settles down at 50s remember this is the equation only for prokaryotic cells when we go ahead and when we had studied about the eukaryotic ones over there the equations were different ribosomes are the same the structures are the, uh, very similar that even over there there will be a large subunit and a smaller one but there will be a difference in what exactly is the uh, settling rate of it okay now these ribosomes are basically made up of proteins as well as rna we know that they, they do the function of protein synthesis and this s that's there is standing for swedberg's unit all right okay now because this is a prokaryotic cell we say that it is having a primitive nucleus is it a well defined nucleus not at all so whatever structure is going to be there this structure this whole structure that you're seeing here is a structure which is similar to the nucleus like a nucleus so you call it as nucleoid because it is similar or like a nucleus okay why is this is the structure which we're referring to as like a nucleus because this is the structure which has the genetic material okay 
there is no membrane bound nucleus there is no nuclear membrane also there is no nucleolus there is no nucleoplasm all these structures if you remember we had seen them present in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell but they are not present in the nucleus of a prokaryotic cell over here the nucleoid that's present is single it is circular and and it is double stranded dna so remember over here it is a single circular double stranded dna in our body we have a helical structure right over here it is a circular one all right remember this very important part which is called as a plasmid remember plasmids are the ones which are found in prokaryotic cells okay do not confuse this with plastids this is plasmids plasmids present in prokaryotic cells what functions are they going to be doing these are basically all round circular loops loops of what loops of dna okay these are loops of dna and these loops of dna are going to actually make that bacteria very strong in fact it makes it strong enough in order to resist any uh, or rather it can when it enters into the body if at all required this can produce an antibiotic resistance okay this was the exact reason why i had told you in that lecture that if at all you are taking a course of antibiotics because of these plasmids you need to make sure that you are going to keep the course of antibiotics continued okay and finish the course so we can also call these plasmids as the mini chromosomes okay and these are having an additional dna which is a circular pattern it is an autonomous and it is self replicating this is the one which gives that bacteria so much strength by producing properties like drug resistance nitrogen fixing and fertility all right okay so that was about plasmids now shall we continue ahead this is a new topic and this topic is all about the cell junctions okay so what is a cell junction basically a cell junctions means something which is going to be holding the two cells together okay so that cell junctions now which are the cell junctions let's move on to that the very first uh, the very first uh, cell junction that we're going to be seeing is called as a tight junction okay or also it can be called as zonula occludens what is it called as zonula occludens now what does this tight junction do because of the presence of this tight junction can you see where it is present okay these tight junctions are as, as you can see present near the apical region the top part of the cell okay and these tight junctions are going to make sure that whatever substance is present in the cytoplasm that substance does not leak out at all because of the presence of that tight junction okay so first of all the tight junction is going to help also in forming the closest contact between the cell as you can see as compared to the remaining junctions this is the one that's holding the two cells the closest together okay so it forms the closest contact between adjacent cells okay and it is found in the apical region what's the function it makes sure that there is no leaking of any substance across the cell membrane all the constituents within the cell are going to be staying and remaining inside the cell only okay so that was the first form of junctions we saw those were the tight junctions now moving on next towards the next type of junctions those junctions are the second ones called as the gap junctions what are these gap junctions going to do the gap junctions are actually going to be enabling the transport of any substance from one cell to another cell okay so whenever whenever any substance is uh, maybe lacking in one cell then automatically it can go from one cell to another cell by these gap junctions so basically there has to be some sort of communication right for anything to be exchanged and that's the gap junction so what are these gap junctions all made up of these are all intercellular channels in the plasma where are they found in the plasma membrane okay of the cells which are near each other so basically over here and through these gap junctions small molecules big molecules proteins all these substances can be going from one cell to another cell okay so this is basically the mode of communication 
okay this is the mode of communication between two cells okay now after this we have another junction which is a very important junction and that junction is going to be called as the adherence junction now the word ex itself is going to be explaining to us why when what function it's going to be doing so adherence junction is a junction which is helping two cells to stick to each other to adhere to each other this is the reason why okay remember one thing that these all these junctions are going to allow communication and make sure that the cells stay together and remember that when the cells stay together only then they are able to come forward and go ahead in the hierarchy and form a tissue so these adherence junctions are the ones which make sure that the two cells which are adhering to each other which are adjacent to each other stay in contact stay stuck to each other so these junctions they play a role in the intracellular adhesion okay cell adhesions happening inside the cell and also in the interaction of the cytoskeleton remember cytoskeleton yes so uh, interaction of the actin cytoskeleton had um, actin protein in it and it interacts with the plasma membrane due to these adherence junctions so three junctions we spoke about the first junction was tight junction second junction was gap junction and third junction was adherence junctions okay these are the three types of junctions present between the cells all right now let's just have a quick recap of the different types of uh, organelles we saw and we also made sure that when we when we talk about eukaryotic cells we know that the organelles present in eukaryotic cells had membranes around them okay when we studied about the prokaryotic cells we saw that there were absolutely no membrane bound cell organelles okay so membrane around the organelles which were present let's just have a clubbing of them the double membrane cell organelles that we studied were first mitochondria then we studied chloroplast having a double membrane then the endoplasmic reticulum even the golgi bodies these were the cell organelles that we have studied which are having a double cell membrane then even this one the nuclear membrane even that was made up of two membranes now let's come forward to the membranes uh, which are a single membrane around the organelles the first one being the lysosomes second one being the vacuoles these all had only one cell membrane around it okay and next there are certain cell organelles which absolutely have no membranes around them okay for example the ribosome okay if you remember the ribosome was a, a cell organelle no sub no membrane around it and remember that is why also we can put this we can say that ribosomes are present even in the prokaryotic because prokaryotic cells have no membrane bound cell organelles so they do have a ribosome and even ribosomes have no membranes around them this was another cell organelle we had studied and this was none other than the centriole okay if you remember that these were the ones which are going to actually um these were the ones which was actually going to be initiating cell division in uh, different organisms okay all right so that was in the cilia okay over here this was the cilia present okay we also saw that there was a structure which was called as this the um the flagella okay in this cilia if you remember it was 1 2 and 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so these were nine triplets which were arranged together okay so we had said that it was a 9 plus 0 arrangement what were these basically made up of proteins and what were the proteins called as they were called as micro tubules all right then also we came to one more membrane when my organelle which has no membrane around it and that was called as the nucleolus where is the nucleolus it is a structure which is found inside the nucleus okay remember this also had its own constituents its own matrix and everything but it does not have a membrane around it okay so that's why it is a no membrane bound cell organelle all right now uh, certain differences that are there which are present between the plant cells and the animal cells let's look into those okay 
So basically we see that um, this, the plant cells and the animal cells differentiation. Animal cells have structures like the lysosomes, the centrioles and also many small sized vacuoles. But the plant cells have first of all a very important structure that the cell wall is present and that cell wall is basically made up of cellulose okay plant cells have structures like plastids which are those plastids chloroplast chromoplast leucoplast and when we talk about the vacuoles well the vacuole of a plant cell is made up is basically very large all right so and the cell wall is present only in plant cells next we see that in animals both plants and animals are going to be storing the food but animals are storing food in the form of glycogen and plants are going to be storing food in the form of starch okay both of these whether it is glycogen or whether it is starch they both are basically polysaccharides which are nothing but complex carbohydrates all right Next, we see that the animal cells are larger and can change its shape because they don't have a cell wall, whereas the plant cells as comparatively are smaller and they cannot change their shape because they do have a cell wall. Okay, animal cells have numerous mitochondria, whereas the plant cells have fewer mitochondria. All right. So those basically were the differences that we had seen between plant cells and animal cells. Okay. Now, um, also one more very important difference between the two as regards to the whole process of cell division. Now, when I talk about cell division, which division am I talking about? I'm talking about mitosis. Okay. So basically during mitosis, after the whole division takes place, then there is going to be a separation of the two cells. Okay. So if one cell is dividing, it's forming two daughter cells, okay? Then these two daughter cells eventually, two there, two over here, animal cell and plant cell respectively. Those are going to have to form a split in between. There have to be two individually present there, okay? So we see here that the difference lies in the final stage of cell division. In an animal cell, okay, the division or rather the separation of the two cells is taking place in a centripetal manner okay in a centripetal manner and when we talk about the plant cell the division that's taking place is taking place in a centrifugal manner from center to the periphery okay this is an opposite way also we see that there are astral rays present okay so basically when we talk about animal cell cell division at that time uh, when we talk about the, the centrioles present there are spindle fibers radiating in different directions Whereas in a plant cell, since there are no centrioles present, the, uh, the star-shaped as spindle fibers are not formed at all. So when we talk about the mitosis happening in a plant cell, over there, there is an anastral mitosis because there's going to be basically no star-shaped spindle fibers. Okay, whereas in animal cell, it is all going to be called as astral mitosis. Remember, aster means star. Okay, now uh, also we saw that when we talk about a prokaryotic cell, we are basically talking about the bacteria. Okay, and when we talk about a eukaryotic cell, we are mentioning about the animal cell and the plant cell. Okay. So I hope these differences and these pointers which we discussed about the prokaryotic and the differences between the pro and eukaryotic cells are quite clear. Now, shall we go ahead and shall we discuss about some MCQs? So let's start with those. Okay. First, plant cell differs by the animal cell by, let's see what are the options given. First, presence of vacuoles. Second, presence of cell wall and chloroplast. Third, absence of absence of cell wall and fourth is absence of chloroplast. So, what is it that the plant cell has but the animal cell does not have? And that would be here, the second option, presence of cell wall and of chloroplast. All right. So, if you know the answers, what you can do is just type them in the chat box. So, we can go ahead and 
come do it together all right next question many bacteria we just discussed this a little while back many bacteria have small circular dna outside the genomic dna means besides the normal dna which would be present in the nucleoid there are other dna also present and that is outside these smaller dna what are those called as were they phasmids were they plastids were they plasmids or were they prophage yes talking about prokaryotic cell circular dna the reason why the prokaryotic cells are having a greater resistance power in the body they also are developing antibiotic resistance what were these structures called as weren't they called as plasmids yes present in the prokaryotic cell or you can call it in the bacteria all right okay coming next the next question all right many bacteria okay this is just we just did this here here it is this is that plasmids that we were talking about here they are okay if you remember these were all loops of dna found in some bacteria main function antibiotic resistance okay all right next question which of the following is seen only in a prokaryotic cell we discussed this if you remember the organelles seen in prokaryotic the organelles seen in eukaryotic out of these which are the ones found only in the prokaryotic cell only in prokaryotic cell okay one after the other lysosomes not found in prokaryotic ribosomes are found in prokaryotic but this is asking only ribosomes are found as well as even in the eukaryotic cell so that also would not be the answer mesosomes do you remember what a mesosome was here it well the mesosome here this is what it was if you remember this mesosome was the structure over here it was an invagination inside the cytoplasm and it was present only in the prokaryotic cell so this would be the correct answer here and endoplasmic reticulum absolutely not it is present only in the eukaryotic cell all right okay so here the correct answer would be mesosome all right coming next remember this phrase it was called as omnis cellula e cellula we just spoke about this in the beginning of this lecture who was actually the one who gave out this whole phrase of omnis cellula e cellula and before we go on to who was the scientist let us try to remember uh, what exactly does this mean omnis cellula e cellula meant that every cell arises from okay every cell arises from a pre existing cell okay so every cell arises from a pre existing cell this is what we call as omnis cellula e cellula and who was the scientist who gave rise to this or who who stated this it was none other than rudolf virchow all right rudolf virchow okay next the larger subunit of prokaryotic ribosome is larger subunit of prokaryotic ribosome so if you remember when we talk about a ribosome here was the whole ribosome out of which there is a small subunit and there is a large subunit when we talk about a prokaryotic ribosome the whole equation lies as 70s is equal to 50s plus 30s okay so over here the larger subunit is none other than 50s at a resettling rate so our correct answer over here would be c 50s okay now prokaryotic cells does not possess what okay so these are basically going to be a list of different cell organelles that we're speaking about so let's talk about that prokaryotic cell does not possess dash let's see that is it chromosome is it mitochondria is it ribosome or is it plasma membrane what is it that prokaryotic cell does not possess remember that prokaryotic cells have no cell organelles with membranes around them so they have no membrane bound cell organelles and over here the membrane bound cell organelle present in this list given these options given is mitochondria okay so mitochondria is actually a membrane bound cell organelle in fact it is a double membrane bound 
organelle. And these mitochondria are found only in eukaryotic cells. All right, only found in eukaryotic cells. Okay, next. The cell organelle present in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is. So let's see what those options given here are. First, ribosome. Second, endoplasmic reticulum. Third, mitochondria or fourth, nucleus. Out of these four options, all of these three, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondrion and nucleus, all those three are double membrane bound organelles. Okay, so they have double membranes around them. But if you remember, ribosomes are the ones, are the cell organelles which have absolutely no membranes around them. So this here is present in a eukaryotic as well as in a prokaryotic cell. Okay, so this is found in both the cells. All right. Next, uh, the same thing. All right, and the answer would be ribosome. All right. So, children, uh, today we have we are done with the further discussion of the a revision of the topic of the prokaryotic cells. We also revised the whole cell theory. Okay, and um, also we looked into some MCQs related only to the prokaryotes. In our next lecture, uh, this would be the final lecture. Next lecture will be the final one for the cell subunit. Okay. And we will be go ahead, going ahead and discussing some important MCQs which have already come into the NTSC question papers and also some other additional MCQs from the chapter. Next lecture's MCQs are going to be all uh, about the eukaryotic cells and the MCQs of eukaryotic ones. All right. So we'll first have a just a, um, a revision of those topics and continuing with the eukaryotic cell MCQs. All right. So I, uh, I hope today's lecture was useful and beneficial to you. Do uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, hope to see you in our next lecture.